Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It is so great to see your smiling face today. Well, today my wife and son are down at the pool and I'm heading down to one of my favorite spots to go shoot. Now, while this morning, while packing the bag, it reminded me of another topic that comes up often with photographers, and that is what lenses should I have in my camera bag? So guys, I'm gonna speak to you about the top three lenses from a general sense that about 95% of the time are the ones I always carry with me. Now. There's a ton of lenses that you can get for your kit, but there's really only a handful of lenses that are a must have if you want a kit that will work for you in virtually any situation. In fact, I'd say there's just three lenses that all photographers should have in their bag. So now whether you're a Nikon shooter like myself or a Canon shooter, Fuji, Sony, or whatever brand, you'll notice that these three lenses that I'm gonna be talking to you are available to you. Now, before we get going, if you have not already subscribed to the channel, take a moment, scroll down, click on the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified as we come out with new videos. <laughs> lens number one, the best all around zoom lens. If you want a well-rounded kit, you need a 2470, or if you're shooting a crop sensor camera, something like a 18 to 50 millimeter. Now, these come available in a 2.8 a or F4 varieties. Now, I'd recommend the 2.8 version if you can afford it. Now, the 2.8 lenses are more expensive than the F4. They're also more versatile because they're light gathering power. These assist you in creating blurry backgrounds thanks to their larger aperture. Now, a 2470 lens are excellent workaround lenses because of their versatility, guys. This can be your go-to lens when you aren't sure what lens to use. That's because it covers a wide angle to also a short telephoto. At 24 millimeter, we're talking about landscapes. At 50 millimeter, you're looking at street photos and so forth. 70 millimeter, it's great for portraits. So you get the point. Now, the trade-off is this lens does a lot of different things pretty well, but not one thing really well. So for example, photos won't be as, as sharp as they would if you use a prime lens, which guys brings me to the next must have lens. <laughs> okay, lens number two, a fast prime lens. Now, this is where recommendations get a little bit tricky. The reason being is a fast prime is a must have. Now, depending on your area of specialty, you're looking at either a 24 millimeter, a 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter, or a 85 millimeter 1.4 lens is a big old must have and is typically super sharp and ultimately fast. So let's talk about these primes. You have the 24 millimeter, which is the godfather of landscapes. You have the 35 millimeter is a great focal length for everything from portraits to landscapes. You have the 50 millimeter, which is just a classic street photography lens. And of course the 85 millimeter is the portrait background. But now I wanna talk about the 35 millimeter for a moment here. The 35 millimeter is what makes this lens so unique and really awesome is the view on a full frame camera closely resembles to what we see with the eyes, so photos have a very familiar look to them. With a large aperture like a 1.4, you can get beautiful, smooth, and buttery bokeh that helps separate the subject from the background. The large aperture means you can shoot handheld with less worry of camera shake because you can ramp up the shutter speed thanks to the light that the lens is now able to collect. Since there's no zoom, this lens forces you guys to explore your surroundings and zoom in with your feet. The more you look around for the perfect composition, the more you develop your creative eye. This is why having a prime lens in your camera bag is such an important tool. Now this isn't to say that you can't be creative with your composition and framing when you're using a zoom lens, but with your prime lens, you have no choice. Prime lenses like this also have a small form factor and are typically pretty lightweight, so they're perfect for street photography and other types of photography where you want to blend into the crowd and not have to worry about having a big clanking lens around. <laughs> Okay, it was getting a little warm outside, so I'm gonna come back indoors here. So, let's pick up where we had left off. We're on lens number three, and guys, this is the big boy. Now, with the two previous lenses, you have a wide angle to a short telephoto cupboard. So now, you need a lens that extends your reach. For that, I recommend the 70 to 200 millimeter 2.8. And yeah, it's not a cheap lens by any means, but if you can afford it, it is so worth it to have in your camera bag. This is one of those lenses that gets you up close and personal with your subject without you having to be right next to it. 
It also is great for up close portraits from a distance. You're able to zero in guys to a small part of a large landscape for a gorgeous detailed shot. And like the 35 millimeter that we discussed earlier, this one will help you develop your creative eye because you can zoom in so much that you can select very small details to highlight in your photos. Now this helps you see the scene as part of a greater whole, which opens up so many opportunities to interesting photos. And instead of just getting that postcard shot, you know, the one that everybody gets, you can zoom in on far off elements and feature them in your photos. So the compression of a telephoto lens is also something worth noting as well. It's very quite pleasing. So, Keep it in mind, these lenses are also very flattering for portraits. What it does is it minimizes the perceived distance between the foreground and the background of your landscapes. So like I said before, there are plenty of other lenses you can include in your kit, but for the money, a 2470, one of the primes that I mentioned to you earlier, either a 24, 35, 50, or a 85, and then of course the big one, the 70 to 200 zoom, are really where it's at. The combination of these three lenses, guys, will give you the flexibility you need to photograph just about anything, anywhere. So, I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please hit the like button down below. If you are not already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. And then lastly, hit the bell to be notified as we come out with new videos. And so till then, get out there, enjoy your camera, and we'll see you soon.